right, hey everybody, how's it going? So I thought we'd do a quick, um, a quick video. So sorry it's been a little bit, but um, Kira has a couple of new features out, and you know, bounce around between I am a DM maker and uh, Kira and S3D a little bit too. Um, but uh, so it's got two new features out, and so this is like the I, don't know, I had to redo this video a couple times because my big fat face was right in the middle of the settings, and I didn't realize it till the end. So anyway, when you're making a video and you're putting your big fat face in the video don't have it on top of the stuff you're trying to show your folks. I had it like my face is usually over here and it was blocking the whole thing. So it was stupid. Funny, but stupid. Um, so anyway, two settings. Uh, so adaptive layer control and uh, tree support. So those are the two things that I wanted to, to play with. Um, adaptive layer control is not new. Um, you, I mean, with like my Tweak It Z video with Kira, or Tweak It Z in um, an Idea Maker, or even S3D. I mean, you can change your per layer settings. Um, you tell, you just, you know, you say, hey, when I get to this particular height, I want to change my layer setting to uh, 0.1 instead of 0.2, or 0.3 instead of 0.2, whatever you want to do. Um, so the adaptive layer control is nice because you just check the box and uh, in the slicing of the model, Kira specifies or it knows which features, which settings, uh, and where to apply those new layers, uh, whether it should go up or down uh, automatically. So it's kind of cool. Um, and so I use, I've got Hulk here because I used both features on Hulk. I used the tree supports and the adaptive layer control. And then I also use the adaptive layer control on another model, and I'll show you some pictures here shortly. So. Um, I am uh, disappointed to tell you that Kira still doesn't know how to tell time. This is a little Hulk. He's tiny. He's only that big. Kira says four hours. Three hours, 56 minutes. Five hours and 22 minutes is what he took. So still doesn't know how to do math, which baffles me. Anyway, um, people say it's the print, the, the jerk and acceleration stuff. and I don't know. I've, I've messed with it. I haven't really gotten any closer. I always just double my time in Kira in my head. So it tells me four hours. I'd say eight hours later, it'll be done. And then when it comes in at five and a half, I'm like, yay, expectation met. Um, so anyway, it hasn't gotten any better at telling time. But it's still got a couple cool features. Um, so here's Hulk, right? And you can tell here he's got um, all the areas where he needs support. And um, let's talk about adaptive layer control first. So to turn these two settings on, Here's what you need to do. Uh, so over on the right side here where all of your print settings are, if you hit your cogwheel, you can hit your cogwheel on, it, it doesn't matter, just hit your cogwheel on any one of these. And uh, if you don't see it right away, then start typing. Adaptive. Um, so I, I ticked all of these. You probably don't really need to, but I ticked uh, use adaptive layers. Um, um, and then to do tree supports, um, I, I just picked these two. There's lots of different settings for tree supports, like the branch diameter and the distance, and uh, I just let the software do all that stuff. Um, and then, so there you go. Turn those two things on. And so, if you want to do adaptive layer control when you throw your model in, it's pretty cool. All you have to do is come down here and tick this box: use adaptive layers, and then that will show whatever if you you know check those other boxes. But um, adaptive layer, maximum variation. So if you load your model, and I've loaded Hulk here to print at um, a normal uh, 0.2 layer height on a 0.4 nozzle. And, um, and what I've told it here to do is that you can change your maximum, uh, your layer variation by 0.1. So you can go as high as a 0.3, and you can go as low as 0.1. Now, I don't know that it would ever really go higher than a 0.2, like I don't think it would go up to like 0.25 or 0.28 or even a 3. I would think it would always come down on the low end of that. And it did with Hulk. Um, I don't see any 0.3 settings on here at all. Um, but anyway, so you do that. So that's the, really the one you want to play with is um, uh, even if you set this at something stupid, like if you had a 0.2 layer height and you said my maximum variation is a 0.2 technically saying that you can go down to zero. I don't think the software's gonna let you go down to zero. It's not gonna let you, you know, although it can't tell time. So I don't know. Anyway, point one is where I left it. I just left it at, at straight up defaults and it came out really nice. Um, and then with the tree support. So let me show you an example of, cause it's hard to tell on the Hulk here cause he's so small, what the result of the adaptive layer, um, adaptive layer height uh, settings is so let me show you so here's there's a little phone holder there's a little ladybug phone holder I don't know it's not very big it's that size hold your phone 
So left side here, I did this twice. Um, left side print is just straight up 0.2 layer height. No adaptive layer control turned off. And my Cura profile is not super tuned and I'm zoomed way in on the camera. So you stick a mic, you know, put anything under a microscope, it's gonna look a little ugly. I got a couple of blobs here that I can play with. Um, so you can see though, as it sort of tries to crest the rounded surfaces here, he starts wearing a hat. It just can't handle that step. Uh, same here on his back. So, um, right as you as you roll up the curve, the step become more pronounced, and then he's just got this nice flat. Um, he's got a little hat on. Now, with adaptive layer control turned on, um, you can see here at about midway up is when the steps become when they should become more pronounced at a point two is when they actually stay pretty smooth. So you can tell this is where it probably came down to like a point one two or a point one, and uh, rolled up, and this is really smooth. Um, you know, you can see the layer lines here just because it's it's the BAMTAC silver and it's under a bright light, but um, uh, it's really smooth. You can't hardly tell. The facial features are much more pronounced. His eyes are better uh, than over here, and same with his mouth. So uh, it's a really cool setting, and you didn't have to go, you know, measure which layer, where did you think that you might want to apply. It just does it. Check the box, figured it out. So that's kind of cool. I do like that. So, so hats off to... Uh, the Kira development team on that because that's that's pretty slick. Um, and then let's see. So there's a top view of it. Again, you know I should have probably put my Z seam in the back, but um, real smooth. Came out pretty good. And then oops, other way. Let's go the other way. And then here's his butt. Uh, probably could have used a couple of more uh, shells because you can kind of see the infill coming through. But again, there's the stepping on the back. Um, and same here. So. Uh, came out pretty good. Um, let's uh, so let's talk about tree supports because I want to. I know we kind of want to get through this. So tree supports is easy to turn on. Um, you want to make sure first because I made this mistake that up here under your support menu you have generate support turned on. And for Hulk, I did everywhere, uh, not just touching build plate, but everywhere. You could probably do it with, uh, no, you want it everywhere for Hulk because um, his, his part of his form here is not touching the build plate, right? You couldn't get up here. So you want this everywhere, uh, at least for Hulk you do. And you can play with it, just um, mess around with it a little bit. Um, and, and I typically leave it at like a 60 degree overhang. It's probably a little excessive for the Ender 2 because that's what I printed them on, but it came out okay. Um, using towers, I think here is optional. Um, but anyway, if you just tick that box and then come down here and tick your tree support. So I did my branch angles at 40 degrees. I changed my top skin pattern to line. So that's the top skin of the tree support. Hard to. So as the branch is coming up, the top of that, do you want that lines? Do you want it zigzag? Do you want it concentric? Oops. It's freaking Hulk. It's tiny. I put it at lines. Doesn't matter. Now if you got something big. Obviously, you're going to want to uh, play around a little bit. Um, but on that, I didn't really mess with him. Now, I did use adaptive layers on Hulk, too, and he came out pretty slick. Um, so if we go look at the layer view. Oh, so, uh, sorry, let me back up for a second. So if you screw up and you only tick tree support and don't go tick your general support and you go to slice it, uh, it just gets to about there and then just stares at you. And doesn't tell you why. Um, I mean, obviously, it did it a couple times, and I was like, it's a piece of crap. And no, I was a piece of crap because you got to tell it to turn on support and then use your tree support. Um, but I would click it, and it would do nothing, and I would bail out of Kira and come back in, reload the model, and do the same thing. And then I finally realized, oh, duh, turn on support and then go take a tree support because it's experimental. So, anyway. That's what it looks like. So it's like a big tree trunk right in the middle of him, and he comes up. Sorry, this is, I don't have a great graphics card here. But comes up and then branches underneath his chin, underneath his fingers, his forearm, um, around the back. Uh, and I was a little worried because he's like, when he came off the print, he's like wrapped up in like one of those alien cocoons. And I thought, you know, chest buster was going to pop out of him. But he came in, it came out, the, all the supports came off pretty easy um, and pretty slick. So. Um, we talked about it, so three hours and 56 minutes. No. Bullcrap. So let's look at, uh, let's, uh, here we pull some picks up. So <clears throat> while it was printing, 
Here's the tree trunk that starts in the middle of him. Here's his, his toes and his foot and his leg coming up. Um, this is the back side from the back of him. Um, this Bamtech Silver, I run this pretty hot. It likes to run hot at like 215, I think is what I ran it at. And yeah, it's stringy, but a little torch, those hairs burn off easy. Um, so there he is for size. All the supports came off pretty easy. Sorry. And um, uh, so underneath the forearm came out nice and smooth. I was worried about that. No problems. Came off pretty good. Underneath this forearm, it was a little bit messy, but not horrible. Um, I'll show you my other Hulk here in a second. Between the fingers, I was worried about his fingers. And um, someone's really trying to get a hold of me. They're going to wait. Uh, and then, so here's the Green Hulk I did. I did him at 50%, I think, on the CR-10, and I just used regular supports. Um, and I did them everywhere, but just the normal towers. And uh, he's a Monet. He looks good from a distance and close up. He's a mess. But um, underneath his forearm here, he's, he's, he's all scarred up. He's a burn victim Hulk, unfortunately. Uh, underneath his forearm didn't even form. Um, but, uh, and then pretty pronounced layer line. So this was this was a test hulk I did. This guy came out smaller, much better to point one, and using the adaptive layers. Everything is formed up. He's watertight. Um, and it came out good. So there you go. So there's two features uh, that would be good for you to play with. Um, and you know, you can use tree supports, you can generate tree supports in like a mesh mixer. That's not new. Um, but um, I think those are more optimized for like an SLA resin printer. Um, but, uh, but Anyway, uh, th so there you go. There's two of them. So a couple new videos coming out pretty soon. Uh, a couple more idea maker videos to tune profiles for like Pet G, um, and some of the new features that came out. So I'll have those out shortly. So thanks, like and subscribe. Appreciate it, and uh, see y'all soon.